All right, so we've got our cordless drill, um, and the hole we've marked, we've center punched it. You remember we just did that. Uh, I did all three holes, so we're going to actually go ahead and drill all three holes. You need something to back it up. If you don't have something to back up the drill when it goes through, it could blow out the wood, and then there's nasty chunks missing and stuff, and that's just not cool. So pretty straightforward. Maybe we should put the drill and drive. All right. There we go. We got it all the way through. We got just a little bit of tear out. That's all right. I can live with that. So let's change bits. We'll put in a. This is a 16th inch bit, and the 16th inch bit is what we need to do for pilot holes. And yes, you have to drill pilot holes for these screws, otherwise they're going to break. It's not going to be fun. So these don't have to go all the way through. Um, for this little drill bit I'm using, I know that I have to go halfway on the, the drill portion to have it be deep enough. That's super fantastic. So this tuner is going to go with this machine, and it looks to me like everything's lining up nice. The thing about buying these tuners in a set like that, uh, I got the six of them. It was three lefts, three rights, and it came with these fancy little chrome jobbies. And when you're all done, the chrome jobby is supposed to slip over there. You have to countersink 5 sixteenths from this side a little bit to get that to fit in. But they come with all the screws. So um, you get everything you need. You get the tuners, the mounting hardware, the, the trim, the whole bit. It's got that little perloid. So um, once I get this all sanded, we're going to go ahead and uh, this will be one of the last things we do before we string it is we'll screw this on. But the holes are already there, so we're ready to apply some finish or keep on sanding. I've been sanding. I've been sanding a lot. I've been sanding a really lot. But it looks really nice. Uh, it's come right along. I think I'm going to put some finish on this and uh, and we'll go from there. Alright, so we've got a couple of more holes we need to drill and we really ought to do that before we put finish on it. So the piece that we had, remember we shortened it. Um, you can see about how much I shortened it. And that makes it so that it's not out on the edges. Um, on the rims of the can because the rims are formed and they want to be they really want to turn the corner so You just be fighting against yourself. It makes a can pucker and it's just bad So I have one of those and I have a c-clamp and right about now is when you wish the, the camera person would loan you a hand but, um, If you don't have a camera person you just have somebody hold it for you. Be right. Okay, so we got that turned over we need to use a countersink bit from the back. So countersink bit, this is not 100% accurately, truly, exactly what I ought to use, but it's really close and I own it. So this is a number six by one inch wood screw and this is a number six by one inch countersink. So we'll take that eighth inch bit out of here that we just used and we'll go ahead and install that countersink and we'll get the handy dandy uh, punch. Now what I need to do is I need to go down through at exactly approximately the middle and stay about an inch in from the end. Yes, it's that precise. No, I didn't measure anything. Okay, and then use your center punch. If you don't have a, a regular center punch, you can use one of these center punches. This is called the nail. And All right, so we've already started this hole here. Sorry, that was off camera. So I'm going to finish that one up, and I want to countersink enough so that the head of the screw is flush with the back of the stick. So let's get her done. And then I'm going to go over here to the other hole. 
and do the same. Okay, I can take that off. I'm not happy with how deep this one is, so I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit. The drill was in the way. All right, so we've got the the holes countersunk so that the can can get mounted. Um, so we are ready to give this a, a real thorough sanding, get rid of that ridge on the back, and then we are going to spray some clear gloss polyurethane on it. You don't have to. You could you could put it together right the way it is. Um, and we're just going to put because this has the lines here. We're just going to put. Um, we're not going to put frets on this one. We're just going to put the nut, and then we'll mount the can, and uh, and then this one will be be all done. So. But uh, I'm going to get the sanding, but you don't want to watch me sand. So um, I'll get the sanding and, and you get to, I don't know, watch all the videos again or something. Until then. All right, so we put a little finish on these. We actually put three coats of clear gloss polyurethane on them out of a spray can. Uh, I put a piece of wire up through here and I hang them up from the top. And then I spray them top to bottom. The two that we've been working on right along... We did them both. Uh, I hope you can see that in the, in the camera. They just got a nice gloss to them. What it'll do is it'll prevent uh, finger marks from showing up, the oils from your finger and such. But those are looking pretty sharp, so we're pretty happy with that. Um, this is the double string model that we've been working on, and I've already installed one of the tuners. You know what? Let's go right ahead and install the other one. So we already set these aside, and we know which one's going to be which. We're going to start from the top, and we're going to put in the little chrome jobby here. Just put that little piece of chrome in there, and I have a, this is a piece of hardwood, it's, this happens to be ebony, but take a piece of hardwood and very gently tap it in there. If you have to really get after it, your hole's not big enough. So I, uh, I redid those holes to 5 16 but only halfway through the wood, and that makes it so that uh, those seat down in there nice and firm. Don't need to glue them or nothing. So now we can turn this over. Stick the tuner right down through there. Everything lines up nice. Top's coming out. Couldn't ask for better. And remember I said they come with the screws the whole bit. Now we, we need to use a number one Phillips on this. The number two Phillips is too big and it'll actually strip the top of the screws. So make sure you use a number one Phillips. It should say P1 or PH1, uh, not P2 or PH2. It is a one because of the size of the screw. So using the right tool for the job. Be nice and gentle, but you got to press down. Um, get those screwed right down in there. Because we have the pilot holes, they shouldn't go hard at all. And I definitely would not recommend using power tools for that. That'll strip those heads right out, very soft. So we got the one. We'll get the other one. all there is to it. That looks pretty sharp, doesn't it? The chrome on the on the maple, that's going to be slick. All right, that's it for this one. Next time we come back, we're going to be fretting this one, and we'll put the single nut on the top of the, uh, the mahogany Dr. Pepper version, all right? All right, so we're going to put, uh, we're going to put the nut on here, and as I said before, we're going to use a fret wire that's a little wider and a little taller. This happens to be uh, number 150 fret wire. If you look at it on Stuart McDonald's, that's what it's called, is 150 fret wire, high, wide, uh, higher, wider. The other fret wire I use is 141, and 141 is just quite a bit, quite a bit narrower. You see that on the, on, the, on the screen? I don't know if you can, but anyway, quite a bit wider. And I put a little bit of curve in this, and that's important because when we put this in this slot, 
we want it to seat really well on the outside. So you're in right and close. We're going to set that right in that first slot. And we're going to grab our piece of hardwood. And we're going to grab our hammer. So all we've done is set it in there. And now we're just going to tap it in. Okay, we've got it to hold a little bit. I can take my hammer and use the other hand. Okay, she's set in there good. Hang on, the camera person put the pliers. We've got it set in there pretty good, and I'm going to take this pair of side cutters. And then I'm going to cut them off about as close as I can. Now, on this one, that's all we're going to do is we're just going to put the nut. We're not actually going to put in any of these other frets. But there's something I want to show you using this one. When we sanded this, there's a little bit of sand and dust left in these slots. So we can take this razor knife and very carefully, without messing up the finish, take out any residue. And it's not so important with this one because we're not going to fret it. But with the other one, we're running fret wires down the whole thing. If there's stuff in here, then the fret wires won't want to seat. So spend a little bit of time, get those all cleaned out. The, the maple one I've already done all of. Um, and this one's going to get full fretted. The great thing about this process is the nut is just a different fret wire. So we can set that aside. And we're going to go with that thinner stuff that we were just talking about. And we're going to set piece of that in and we're going to set our hardwood on top and we're going to get it seated in and we'll take our pliers and we're going to cut that off so it leaves a little bit extra that's all that's another step we'll go over here in just a minute I'm going to put that right onto there get that seated in now we'll go back over all of these and make sure we got them good but you see I got a block under here that's helping me support that. So we'll go right down this thing. Some of that fret wire gets a little tough to cut, but we'll get it. Dropped it right off the table. And I have to go from this way. Alright. Set it right on there. My piece of hardwood, you don't want to mar those up the frets. So you're going to want to put a piece of hardwood on there, tap it on, get your cutters, get a good bite on there. You can see that one didn't want to seat all the way, but that's okay. It's, it's held where I want it. And now I can just take my my piece of hardwood and get it, get it right down in there where I want it. no scratches on the top. Now we're going to take a file and go down over all of those uh, is one way to do it. We're actually going to go out to the workshop and that one inch belt sander real easy we're going to go across those because if we get a little rough with it it'll take the finish right off the side so um, I'll leave that decision to you whether you're going to use a file. Uh, sandpaper really won't do that um, but a file or that sander that uh, any abrasive sander would work just fine on that. Just be careful of your finish because you put a lot of work into it. And yes, the finish has to go on before the frets because you can't really put the finish over the frets. It'll wear uh, and then it'll make a mess and it'll be yucky. So you either have to tape the frets off when you finish it or put them on after and that's what we do is we put them on at the end. So I'm going to finish fretting this one uh, all the way to the end. When we come back we are going to be uh, fitting the can to both of these so until then